Welcome to Roadshow. If this is your first time joining us, thank you. If you're already a subscriber, well, thank you too. In this video, I'm reviewing a Jeep Wrangler. It happens to be an unlimited Rubicon model, so it has four doors, a reasonably practical interior, and of course, incredible off-road capability. But in addition to all that, this model also features a diesel engine, which helps make it an absolute beast out on the trail. So appropriately, this week I have been using it to do all kinds of crazy Jeep things. Like battling rush hour traffic. Patrolling my local strip mall. Stocking up on invaluable supplies and even eating lunch. You know, most people don't realize chowder is the perfect road trip food. Yep, I've used this Wrangler Unlimited exactly like 98% of owners do. I've pushed it to the ragged limits and sometimes beyond. Now, don't get your boxer shorts all in a bind. I was just kidding about that stuff. This machine is an absolute beast and I will be taking it off-road, so make sure you stick around for that. But while it's still reasonably clean, let's cover a few basics. As you may have noticed, this is a Rubicon model, which is essentially the most capable version of the Wrangler that Jeep offers from the factory. It's got a rock track 4x4 system with a two-speed transfer case and four to one low range gearing. Beyond that, there are super aggressive BF Goodrich tires mounted to 17 inch wheels. Heavy duty Dana live axles are found at each end of this Wrangler and they're both fitted with electronically locking differentials. Beyond that, Rubicon models are fitted with a disconnecting front sway bar for extra suspension articulation. Protecting this vehicle's body and delicate mechanical components, it's got rock rails, a whole bunch of skid plates, and even optional steel bumpers. Three different engines are offered in the Wrangler. You can get a base 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. It's good for 285 horsepower. There's also a two liter turbocharged four cylinder that gives you 270 ponies. And then of course there is this, the engine you Jeep fanatics have been clamoring for. It's a three liter eco diesel V6 and I could yammer for hours about this thing's finer points, but I'll spare you. Comprehensively reworked for Wrangler duty, it's rated at 260 horsepower and a thundering 442 pound feet of torque. It's bolted exclusively to an eight speed automatic transmission. This drivetrain combo should get you 22 miles per gallon in the city and 29 on highway drives. Combined, expect around 25 MPG. Pretty impressive for something that's boxier than a shipping container. All right, do you guys know what time it is? That's right, it's time to talk tech. Now, don't let the Wrangler fool you. Yes, its chassis may have more in common with a covered wagon than more modern vehicles, but it's still loaded with fresh features. This model is fitted with LED exterior lighting, which is nice and bright. It's also got forward collision warning to keep you safe. Parking sensors make docking this Landcraft a much easier task. Plus, it has blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert and adaptive cruise control, which is both attentive and smooth. The JL Generation Wrangler has a great interior. This is not news. In this one, we've got contrast stitching, some very nice soft plastics, and pretty good leather as well. But in the middle of all of this is the screen. 8.4 inches corner to corner. This is FCA's excellent Uconnect infotainment system. It also comes with embedded navigation in this model. Plus, it's got satellite radio and even a built-in Wi-Fi hotspot. Of course, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are both supported. Plus, this Wrangler has enough Amazon Alexa skills to pay the proverbial bills. Using Amazon's voice assistant, you can start the vehicle, lock, unlock it, or even send navigation directions right to the Uconnect system. This tester also has the optional body colored three piece removable hard top. It's super easy to take off. You just undo a few latches and away you go. Of course, the Wrangler offers a variety of other roofs as well. Of course, if you're feeling really adventurous, you can tip the Wrangler's windshield forward and even remove the doors. Jeep, of course, gives you a nifty little toolkit so you can do just that. And very cleverly, they've engineered a place in the rear cargo hold where you can put all of those fasteners so you don't lose them.
On road, this Jeep has a jiggly ride, rubbery steering, cumbersome handling, and loads of wind noise. Now, none of that should be surprising if you have ever been in a Wrangler before. In fact, it's probably part of this vehicle's charm. And really, it's not that unrefined when you consider just how capable this thing is. Front and rear, these seats are, well, they're okay, but the lower cushions are just too short to be really long haul comfortable. My thighs, <laughs> they need more support than these things provide. Also, the back seat is a bit challenging. It's hard to get into and out of because the door opening is its kind of small. Hey, while you're here, make sure to give this video a big ol' thumbs up, subscribe to the Roadshow YouTube channel, and while you're at it, hit that bell icon so you are notified when we upload new content, which is all the time. As for the all-important engine, yep, it sounds like a diesel, especially when you first start it up on cold mornings. There's definitely a bit of clatter, but once you're inside, it is mostly quiet and smooth. Now, this oil burner does make the Wrangler feel quick, though it's not quite rocket ship fast. This thing does start pulling at about 3,000 RPM, storming ahead to about four grand, at which point the transmission grabs the next gear and the party starts all over again. This thing's fuel-saving stop-start system is speedy and smooth, improving the around-town fuel economy, and what more could you ask for? Well, how about an abandoned gravel pit? Yes, this off-road park is freaking amazing. The terrain in here, super rugged, just about everything you could want for testing an off-roader like this Wrangler, which believe me, is more than up to the challenge. All right, let's talk a few numbers. As for the approach angle, the Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon right here is just about 44 degrees. The breakover angle, 22.6. And of course, the departure angle measures a stout 37 degrees. As for ground clearance, it's just shy of 11 inches. And what all of that means is there aren't too many places you can't go in a Wrangler. So what's really impressed me about this Wrangler is how stiff and how sturdy it feels. The terrain in here can be pretty gnarly, and I've had a wheel or two off the ground here more than once, and there are no rattles or squeaks. The structure feels absolutely stiff. No junkiness or cheapness to report. Of course, you might be surprised just how far you can go in a Wrangler leaving it in two-wheel drive. Thanks to 10 plus inches of ground clearance and those super knobby tires, it'll go a lot of places, but sometimes it does get stuck. But if that happens, not a problem. Just grab the lever, pull it right into four high. That's good for really most off-road situations. Give it a second to shift once it's in gear, roll on the throttle once again, and it should. Yep, there we go. She'll dig herself right out. But of course, if you encounter some super gnarly terrain, you can always stop for a second, shift her into neutral, pull this lever all the way back and engage for low. Now we have gear reduction in play and even more torque heading out to those wheels. But if that's not enough, we've also got locking axles front and rear, as I mentioned earlier, and I can disconnect that front sway bar. The Jeep Wrangler's popularity, rugged styling, and immense off-road capability are all, frankly, astounding, but perhaps the craziest thing about this vehicle is actually the price. My tester here checks out for $60,815. Now that price tag includes $1,495 in destination charges and just about fifteen dollars in options. Now the single biggest extra on this particular model, of course, is that diesel engine. FCA wants four grand for that, plus they charge you an additional $2,000 for that mandatory eight-speed automatic gearbox. Certainly the diesel-powered Wrangler is king of the hill, but don't forget both available gasoline engines are pretty excellent as well. And guess what? They cost a whole lot less.